the name of our liberating, loving, life-giving God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. In June 2007, Angler Green was officially established as the environmental group for the Anglican Church of Southern Queensland. So if we have the first slide, please to provide support to parishes in fulfilling the worldwide Anglican Communion's mark of mission, to strive to safeguard the integrity of creation and sustain and renew the life of the earth. By offering parishes and agencies support, their hope is that ha parishes could find some small thing that could be a source of life and growth in their community. And that the actions they choose would draw on the interests, strengths or particular skills of the people in that community and be fulfilling to them. Angler Green continues to work purposefully to provide resources to ensure that the theology of creation is at the forefront of the Anglican Church, Southern Queensland. The Reverend Peter Moore is chairman of Angler Green and he is unable to be with, uh, with you today, so he asked me to come in his stead. He is one of the Anglicans on QSEN, which is the Queensland Church's Environmental Network, which is one of the commissions of Queensland Churches Together. He is also on the Anglican representative on both the Queensland Australian Religious Response to Climate Change and the Anglican Communion Environmental <coughs> Network. Angler Green and the other organisations are able to assist with how we as parishes and as individuals can work to safeguard the integrity of creation and to sustain and renew life on the earth. The obvious things most of us think of when considering how we can help to reduce our impact on the environment is solar panels and water tanks. And while they have an important role in helping us to reduce our carbon footprint, there are many other things we can do or change which will have a positive impact. Sometimes rather than starting with big things like panels and tanks, we need to start small small changes in what we do or how we do it can have a large impact on the long-term sustainability of the environment. Now, a lot of the things I'm about to mention may sound like I'm teaching you to suck eggs because they're things we already know, we're already doing, or should be. Where you know we, we're all aware of it, but sometimes we forget to keep it in the forefront of our actions and our thoughts. Shop at your local store for fresh food. Buying fresh fruit and vegetables in season from local markets or stores helps the local economy and it reduces the additives we eat. When we buy fresh fruit and veg grown in our local area rather than those that have been kept in cold storage for endless months or and then transported in or from the other side or the other end of the country, not only will it put money back in our local communities, but we also reduce the amount of preservatives and chemicals we consume. Save paper. 
If you don't need to print it, don't. If you have to print it, do it double-sided. And then when you end up with all of these pages that are only printed on one side, save them because most photocopiers or printers will allow you to print on the reverse side. So print things that are just for you, things that are not to, to go elsewhere or to go to other people, but you'll keep it for your lists, keep it for printing your sermon, keep it for printing things that are just for you and print it on the reverse side. That way you save the amount of paper you're using. Save the endless number of envelopes you receive and use them for your local shopping list, your notes or other personal things that you need to write. Keep your grounds clean and tidy and I can see that you are very good at that here in Harvey Bay. Remove litter and other rubbish that sometimes is found on the grounds or even the footpaths. But don't just do it for the parish grounds, do it for your local neighbourhood as well. And when you're out and about, take notice of the litter on the ground. Pick it up and dispose of it thoughtfully. When cleaning either your home or the church or wherever, use ecological and biodegradable products. We have all re-learned, re uh, rediscovered vinegar as the ultimate cleaner. It cleans most things very, very well. But no, it doesn't kill COVID. So we may still have to use appropriate, stronger products occasionally to maintain our COVID compliance. Be a creative and conscious consumer. Think about the origin of your purchases. Are they slave free? Were the makers of it paid a living wage? Are they made from natural or synthetic materials? And how will they eventually be disposed of? Is there an alternative which is more environmentally sound? Consider when disposing, of, when you're about to throw something out, consider why am I disposing of this item? Can it be repaired? Is it suitable for repurposing, either through an op shop or through, by using another purpose? Old boots make great pot plants. Cotton clothing and cloths can be composted. Old crockery is often used by those who do mosaics. Socks and stockings can be used to tie up your plants. And grain bags can be made into handbags, wallets and purses. When and if possible, carpool to reduce car, em excuse me, car emissions. It also gives you time and opportunity to have conversations with people you don't always have the time or opportunity to otherwise talk with. Turn off lights in rooms as you leave. And that may seem very simple, but it's something it's very easy to forget to do. You just walk in and out of rooms without noticing to turn off the light. Open the curtains rather than turning on the light. Avoid or minimise the number of electrical items you have on standby. Turn off PowerPoints if nothing is plugged into them. Even when the phone is not connected, phone chargers use power 
if you leave it turned on. TVs, stereo systems, kettles and many other everyday items which we use occasionally but which remain plugged in and sleeping all contribute to our power usage. Trees are an important and often undervalued part of a healthy e ecosystem. And the kids had it right. Plant, water your trees, plant more trees, stop cutting down trees. Where and when possible, if you have had to clear an area, plant another tree somewhere else. Regularly remove weeds and keep gardens well composted to reduce the amount of water needed. Where and when possible, plant low maintenance plants that do not require a lot of water. And when watering, do it in the early morning or late evening to reduce evaporation. I'm not sure what the public transport is like in Harvey Bay, but if you can and where it is appropriate, use it instead of a car, because this will help to reduce car emissions. If there isn't good public transport and you think it's something that would add to the community, ask your local council about it. See if it's possible. Sometimes it's not but sometimes it is possible. Ride a push bike. Not all of us are very good at riding push bikes. <laughs> Most of us have double flush toilets, but there are other ways we can do, other things we can do to reduce our water use in our homes. Short showers save water. Only wash up when you have a full load and use a dishwasher if you have one, but make sure it's full before you put it on. If you only have a few things that need washing up and they need to be done now, use a basin instead of the sink and then pour the water into the garden and use detergents that are environmentally thoughtful. Grow your own fruit or vegetables. They taste better, they save packaging, and you could even develop a collective where your excess and her excess and his excess and that person's ex excess can all be put together and then you can share your excesses and all four of you or the whole community can share in other people's Excess, excess produce so that it doesn't end up compost or being wasted. And you ha will have wonderful tasting fresh fruit and vegetables, which, hope, which will have less pesticides or maybe even no pesticides and they will be better for you. Many vegetables can also be grown in pots so a lack of garden need not be a barrier. Chickens are another great source of homegrown food, but I'll warn you, it doesn't make for cheap eggs. They are not cheap to keep. I have 13 of them. I love them, love them dearly, but the cost of, the, cost of keeping the chickens does not out, over, outweigh the, the, the saving on buying eggs. Reduce your plastic waste. We no longer use single-use single plastic bags for our shopping, but what do you do when you go to buy fruit and veg? Are you still putting them in plastic bags? Are you able to take your own veggie bag. Lightweight mesh bags are great for putting your fruit and veg in. You can see through them mostly 
Um, you, they don't weigh anything, so you don't have to take the produce out of them when you get to the, col to the checkout. You just scan it, yep, they're up there, red delicious apples, that's my lemons, they're the, the, just tell the checkout operator what's in the bags and they just put them through with, and then they're easy to carry home because they're already in bags. The mesh laundry, gen, you know, the, the delicates bags that you get for your laundry make great fruit and veg bags. If you do end up with plastics from your shopping or from elsewhere, wash them after use. And when they're dry, take them back for recycling. Coles and other organisations make lots of useful and great things out of our shopping bags and recycled plastics. And that's some of them. Drink tap water, not bottled water. And when you're going out, take your own bottle. Turn off taps when not using them. It sounds simple, but you know, when we turn on the tap to wash our hands, you put on the soap and then you stand there and you're washing your hands and singing happy birthday as we're required, you know, which, which gives you washing time. And the water's running. So turn off the water. Wet your hands, turn it off. Put the soap on, wash your, scrub your hands, then turn on the, the tap again, rinse it off and turn it off. The same with cleaning your teeth. Wet your toothbrush, turn it off. Clean your teeth, then turn it on again to rinse your mouth out. And watch out for those dripping taps. Get them fixed as soon as possible. When and where appropriate, use energy-saving light bulbs. They seem expensive, but they generally last longer, and in the main, they give a better light than candescent ones. And when appropriate, use solar lights, like garden for lighting your garden paths or for security lighting for your house or the church. Recycle more effectively. Recycling is more than just filling up your yellow top bin. It's using compost bins for food and garden waste and diverting as much as possible from landfill. And they are the bins that you will find in the Cathedral of St John in Brisbane. That is what they have in their morning tea area. So they have the four bins, um, one of them for soft plastics like cling film and biscuit packaging. Uh, those chip bags that we all get that have got silver inside it, they're not silver, it's just silver, it's plastic. So they wash, rinse it out, dry it and stick it in your soft plastics. Um, you, and then... Um, Recycling cartons, bottles, milk containers, but no, and well, they don't want the cups. Uh, food waste for the worms, but no tea bags because worms don't like tea bags. They like coffee, but they don't like tea bags. And then garbage and put the cups in there because, but sometimes you can buy, especially if you've got a function on, you can have. Um, compostable cups. Now they're technically, um, they're, they're compostable if you've got a purpose-built compost bin. But they will, if you put them in the bottom of your compost bin, they will eventually break down. It takes a long time but they will break down and it saves landfill because our landfill is very quickly filling with stuff that will be there for the next hundred years because we haven't been careful about how we throw out and plastic is one of the worst. Um, find an outlet that will recycle batteries, both domestic and vehicle batteries. Use the containers for change system to earn money for yourselves or the church and look at outlets for red cycle recycling. 
Coles and Woolworths both send their soft plastics to Redcycle. And Redcycle, which was the previous slide, collaborates with three trusted Australian-owned and based recycling and manufacturing partners who utilise recovered material to produce a range of recycled plastic products, including using it in road surfacing and construction. Plastic forests produce plus post, which is a steel reinforced plastic post, which is an alternative to pine, concrete or steel fence posts. And since 2011, benches outside many coal supermarkets contain red cycle plastics, which, and they also donate them to schools and community groups. Many local councils are now using polyrock aggregate, which is made from recycled soft plastics and is incorporated into concrete in place of mineral aggregate for use in curbs and footpaths. And some, some countries I've read about are also starting to use ground glass as the base, rock, base level for um, underneath the bitumen for our roads because it lasts longer it will, and it, it gives a stronger uh, road base. So talk to your local council about whether they can also participate in this new circular economy. As I said, one of the Anglican Church's seven marks of mission is to strive to safeguard the integrity of creation and sustain and renew the life of the earth. The world has been given to us by God for our use rather than, and rather than conquering or subduing it, we are called to be stewards of it. It is our responsibility to care for the environment, both fauna and flora, and that means we need to be aware of the impact the way we live our lives has on the environment. We can't all do everything, but collectively, we can achieve a lot more than we can individually. So how is the theology of creation valued by you? And how is it valued by this parish? What small things can you do which will be a source of life and growth? for your community. Amen.